Hello everyone, this is me Risha and welcome to my YouTube channel and to my podcast. And here we have Mr. Nico and he is from United States. So let us talk to him. Hello Mr. Nico, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing good. Thank you for having me and giving me this opportunity. Okay, fantastic. So Mr. Nico, can you a little bit introduce yourself that what you do and where are you from so that we can know you better? Yes, thank you for the opportunity. So I'm Nico Pengen, as mentioned, and I am an upcoming and aspiring author. I currently am writing books about essentially whatever comes to mind, but in particular, I'm emphasizing and focusing on my heritage. So I'm looking at right now, I'm writing this series called the Bate series, which is centered around my heritage as a Dominican Taino Indian which is pretty much just fancy words about saying like my great 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 grandparents what they used to do for fun like i'm taking the sport that they played which is called bate and just adding a futuristic component to it as well as you know writing isn't just about publishing a book but it's also trying to get the back end because you have to market it because what good does it do you to write an amazing book if only one person reads it so it's not just the writing portion and being creative, but as well as being, you know, business oriented to give it to people. So that way people can read it and see it. And that way, maybe they can let me know if it's a good book, if it's a bad book. And I'm also currently at the moment having a YouTube channel where I'm disclosing more information and more of my interests, not just from book writing or business, but also gaming. Um, because the book was inspired by gaming as well as by a movie. So I try to incorporate all of that in the things that I try to do or that I'm going to be doing on a continuous uh, basis. Okay, fine. So like you are an author and like, so which kind of book mostly you go for? Like which kind of book you read or which kind of book you mostly find interest in writing? So for reading, Reading, I try to read the books that appeal to me, which would be my favorite book of all time is Redwall. I love Redwall by Brian Jaquez and all the books by Redwall, which are my favorite. Like, I don't know if you guys can see this book too well, but this is one of my favorite books by the author, uh, Brian Jaquez. It's called Tris. So this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite books because the author, he wrote the books for blind people so he wrote them in a way that somebody that doesn't know what a color is is able to read it and understand it and imagine it in their head so when i read i try to go for books that try to use their imagination as much as possible when they're fiction oriented books when it's non-fiction oriented books i try to aim for the books that i feel are going to teach me the things that either i want or need to know um as for the kind of books that i'm writing it's kind of the same thing like i used to think that i would write completely differently than what i would read but as i started writing i started to realize like i really care about the fact that the use of imagery in the books that i'm trying or i'm aiming to have i wanted to be on that same level to kind of give him that respect like wow I read this amazing book and now I want to in turn create something about me personally and use that same amount of imagery to create something that nobody else thought was possible. So that's how I go from reading to then writing about pretty much the same kind of topics. And soon I might start trying to do nonfiction as well to try to do some self-help and improvement tips and tricks that you can do. Um, so maybe I'm not sure yet for now. I'm just going to stick to the bate and fiction, but I don't know. We'll see what, 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 you know, the future holds. So like which one you like the most, like you would like friction book or you like self-help book. So which book you like the most, you know, all those, uh, like all those book. And uh, honestly, honestly, I love these more than I love right. the books that are self-help, but, but, you know, I'm an author, so I like both. You know, that's one of the cool things that I realized about being a self-published author is I can like the books that teach you a lot of information and a lot of core skills, but I can also just as well read books that allow me to pretty much be creatively wild. 
Mm, okay, fine, fine. But so number like, one, like I... number one for sure. Number one for sure, though. Imagine if fiction oriented for sure. And the only reason is because everything else is technically boring. When you can, like, think about it. If you're in class, you'd rather be distracted and daydream about this amazing, cool thing or whatever. But then when the teacher says, "Hey, give me the answer to number 15 you're like, "Ah, oh, I don't want to <laughs> give you the answer. I want to still like." Or, or when you wake up and you have a dream and you're like, "Dude, I was Superman. Why did I wake up?" Like that's the kind of mindset I have when I write. So I want to write a book that somebody says, "Like, dang it, why did you distract me?" My favorite part was coming up. So that's the books I love to read, and those are the books that I try to create. And that's why, for me, they're my favorite. Mm. So, so like, which book are you thinking that you would write in future, like, or you are working upon it? Like, which kind of book? Like, you will write a novel, or you will write related to business, self help, or like, what is your niche that you will go for? Like, as you told that you are author. So right now, my niche is is writing for fiction. And science fiction. So I have two books already published. The first one is Uprising of the Pencils. It's it's a fantasy oriented book for children. Like and, Uprising of a Pencil. Yes. And then this one okay. is a science fiction book. So this one is more so for like sci-fi individuals. So right now all I have is the fiction oriented. But after I finish the series, I might start looking into the nonfiction aspect because if i can write i can i might be able to explain how i was able to do this and maybe the words or my experiences might help somebody else figure it out sooner so that way they can do it a little bit faster and better okay fine means you both the books are related to sci-fi only right as of right now yes they're related to just completely imaginary not to say that i haven't written things on my own that are non-fiction because my blog the nicopengan.com website it has all my non-fiction material already there it's just i'm just so focused on creating this brand new world and creating like trying to layer it trying to do everything correctly although I, like i said i have the non-fiction stuff already on the website i just haven't had the time or the patience to be able to do the fiction and non-fiction at the same time but soon maybe you know who knows at what point i'll be able to do that as well so so like whatever thing you publish in book or like you write the articles and all so same thing you publish it in youtube or what do you do yes like, so the articles that i publish that are non fiction oriented they're about how you can go from being somebody that completely doesn't recognize your strengths or weaknesses and how you can just stay dedicated and focused to the task that you have in front of you and just the task that you have in front of you and if you're able to do that on a consistent basis then you're able to get what's called like small wins. So if you win uh -huh. daily, if you win consistently and if you do it over time, then you'll be able to get more progress done in a shorter period of consistent effort as opposed to like some people that they they think that they have to have everything already concrete, solid to be able to do stuff. You know, so that's kind of like my method of explaining things on the website and the blogs. It's just consistently do, consistently do. M most people think, well, I want to do the right way, so let me study the right way, right? Mm. I think that that might be some half-heartedness because if you really think about it, the best people in history have gone down because they were doers. Yes, they thought about it, but ultimately they still had to do. Like right now, you're interviewing me. There might be a million and one people that think I would love to have the opportunity to be an interviewer. They think that yeah. and you're actually doing it, you know. I have a lot of friends that would say, "Yo, I want to have a podcast, but I need $15,000 <laughs> to be able to launch it." And I was like, no. Why do you need that much money? He's like, well, I need to have the studio. I need to have the professional microphone. I need to have the camera. I need. To I was like, you don't need that. I was like, oh, I do. Yeah, I no, you don't. You need to know how to ask questions, and mm -hmm. how to get answers, and then how to get people that are interested in listening to those answers. Exactly. And then once yeah. you do that, then you're able to command people to say, hey, this guy is bringing valuable content. What he is bringing, exactly. he's giving me stuff I want to hear, so I want to keep hearing more and more. Same with the book. If I write books about Bate and people like the mm -hmm. first book, 
then they might like my second book that's coming out in a couple of months and then they might mm-hmm. like my third then they might like the fourth they might even like the audiobooks you know i already mm-hmm. have the audiobook format for batay ascending and what if they're spanish what if they don't understand english you know i'm writing it in spanish and translating in spanish so that way they can have it available as well because i know that so, a lot of people around the world speak different languages so that's so just like my point of view miss your book is published in spanish as well as in english yeah uh, next month the book is going to be published in spanish on march 12th that's the date i'm aiming for and i'm going to try to do my utmost best to keep it on that date but i started to realize authors have a reason for putting a date and sometimes delaying it so hopefully by that date everything is going to be solidified i already have the cover art in spanish i have the manuscript i just need to make a few tweaks here and there and it should be already all set for that book that's in spanish so Yeah okay okay fine fine yeah that is great like you're writing book you're publishing so like from where you get this idea for example writing a book is not that much easy okay you need to think a lot you need to write a lot so from where did you get the idea like you get this idea from different books or you are writing your own life experience so what do you think like from where do you get this idea about the books and about the writing and how do you deal this kind of things so that's a great question so for which book are you asking that question for Yeah like uh, I think two books you have published so like you can say of one of the book or like of, of of the both of the book from where you have got the ideas and all like you have okay. read from different books you have compared that so what have you done before so writing the, the two books uh, nice question so for the first one so for the first book I got that idea from the Brian Jacques Redwall series so like I said I used to read this book so much and he personified pencil uh he personified animals to make them seem like they were human so you know the stories of you know king arthur and dragons and humans slaying them with knives and stuff like that that's essentially where the world of redwall comes from similar to game of thrones how game of thrones is except instead of humans it's just you know animals so what i did is i was bored one day in class our teacher in a college had us do a a narrative of some sort of creative story it was she just wanted it two pages and she wanted us to do it on the spot right then and there just right just so that way she can know what our writing uh ability is on a immediate improvisational mindset and so within 30 minutes i had to give her a brand new story that never ever 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 wrote before and i decided to do it based off of big pens which i don't know if uh, if you have you know pens and stuff like that but pens are mostly pens are you know the pens that you write with and what not exactly like that so in class i looked at that and i just started formulating this idea like if i was Brian Jacques and if i was going to personify a pencil how would i go about doing it how would that pencil attack another pencil how would, how would he have a mindset of sup- uh, him being superior to another object and then i just looked at my pencil case like you know how you college students we have like cases of a whole bunch of material we overpaid for and we may never use like i just looked there and i looked at okay if i was going to create a story from scratch how am i going to do it in what may in what way in what manner and then i just started doing that and then i just pieced it together and i started grabbing inspiration from other themes but mainly from the red wall story and that's how uprising of the pencils came to be now but they ascending a little bit different and mind you if you go on any of the websites that i have uprising you'll see the the inspirations exactly from but the big big one was red wall for but they ascending this one was more inspirational from different formats because I saw Alita Battle Angel and when I saw that movie that movie just gave me such an amazing insight for how I want to create and structure the story because when I saw Alita Battle Angel I saw her you know using futuristic boots and I saw everybody using futuristic boots when they were racing around on the race track and so that gave me the idea that I need to put a cover on my story with the shoe you know and so alita battle angel gave me that initial idea and then when i started to think about okay you know that's cool and all 
but what what coolness would it be if we're you know in the future and we're using new technology and that technology allows us to create a new sport which that sport is a mixture of i don't know if you watch harry potter but harry potter had quidditch and in quidditch they fly and they're playing a sport while flying you know it's almost like basketball but you're flying in the air mm. kind, kind of kind of so bate is with that mindset except and they use technology so they use boots to levitate and accelerate to have an anti-gravity field that allows you to stay motionless in the air similar how space is right now so it, that's where the story came from is being able to go out in outer space having a leader battle angel amongst a whole bunch of other anime inspirations that i won't really get into because i want other people to kind of start when they start reading and looking at it and they'll see it for themselves like oh i can see a theme similar to this anime or to this other story it might be there as well as i love how you mentioned that the inspiration might have come from my life which is very true because nico penguin is my gamer tag so that's essentially me it's a representation of me of how i think i am or how i want to believe i am as a gamer like i think i'm i'm this way when i play video games i think i'm like this and the characters are inspired by a majority of all my close friends um mm -hmm. so a lot of them when they've read the book and they let me know like oh snap is this character based on me and it's like yes 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 it is and it's like ah oh, i don't talk like that i don't do that ah oh, you're misrepresenting me ah oh, you're lying on my name i'm not like that da, 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 da. so yeah the book wasn't just like you know 100 percent out of my mind i just looked at stuff around me and i said hey it would be so cool if one of my closest friends was a book character because now i can show everybody how much of a cool person they are or how much of a crybaby, how much of a wimp, how much of a tough guy, etc. But I don't use their name, so nobody knows. You know, only the people that is around me would figure out, like, oh, I know who that is. Okay, fine. So, like, my next question is all about, okay, so as, as you told about a lot of books, so, like, what is the benefit of reading books? Okay, for, like, what are the benefits or what are the merits of reading books? And why all the persons who read books, like, those who are watching us might be not might be reading books, so why, what is the benefit and why the people should read books? This is the question. Uh, oh, see, you're a really good, that's a really good question. So the benefits of reading, there's so many. So I'll just try to break them down to what I believe are the best. So for yeah. fiction, for fiction, I'll, I'll do fiction and nonfiction just to keep it uh, very simple. So for fiction, the reason you should read a fiction book, it, it allows you to step outside of your box and it allows you to step outside of your comfort zone. So many times in our life, we're so focused and dedicated to what we have going on that we don't recognize that there's a whole world outside of us. For example, many people, when they read a book, they won't immerse themselves. They'll read the fiction book, but they won't immerse themselves in it. Which is to say, like, you could read a fiction book, but if you don't imagine it, you're not really reading it for how the author was trying to write it, nor exactly. are you taking the benefit of this whole other world. Because if you're reading a fiction uh -huh. book, the whole point mm -hmm. is there's a fake story. It's a fake story. It's not real. And the author wants you to understand what's that story. Amongst some authors like to add themes to the story to give you like an actual, a real world lesson others uh, just try to give you an amazing story so for fiction it's the fact mm -hmm. that you can step outside of your comfort zone enter yeah. somebody else's perspective on life or their perspective off of certain things and just take mm -hmm. it in a lot of fiction books um are pretty much about coming of age you know, a lot of the superhero books, a lot of the superhero comics, a lot of all, most of those are a lot of coming of age. So a lot of kids or guys that read it or watch it is just a whole bunch of coming of age. But that's fiction for nonfiction, for nonfiction, a completely different reason. Nonfiction, the reason to read nonfiction is because somebody compiled information that they've been researching. We don't know for how long. It could be something that they've been researching for 10 years, or it could be something that they just did a Google search and they're just doing a summary, five minute search. 
But the point <laughs> is, is that they're compiling data and information and they're trying, keyword trying, to give it to you in a useful way. You know, for example, uh, what, one of my favorite nonfiction authors is Malcolm Gladwell. You know, my, mm -hmm. my closest friend gave me this little challenge of, you know, we hadn't read for a long time. This was like three or four mm -hmm. years ago. We hadn't read for a long time. And so he had this challenge for me. And he was like, I challenge you to read this book. He never mm -hmm. finished the book. Never. Mm -hmm. He only read 10 pages of it and he was just, oh, you got to read this book. You got to read this book. It's so good. I'm on page 10. And I was like, oh, snap, you haven't you haven't even read like 10 books in your life. I got to read this book. If you're recommending it to me, I got to read it. I got addicted to it. I finished the book in less than two weeks. Uh, it was called David and Goliath. I really liked the book. My friend never mm -hmm. read it again. He didn't care about it. Once he finished that 10th page, he was done. But he gave me the he gave me the idea and I ran with it. I literally finished the book and the book was about how Malcolm goes in different areas of life and he just takes in knowledge. So he mm. goes in, and he has no idea what cancer is and he goes and he does a whole year's worth of research on cancer or something okay. of that nature. And then he'll tell you all he knows about that information. And so uh -huh. when you read a book, you are reading somebody else's time that they invested mm -hmm. to learn a topic, which exactly. is crazy because that means if you take that two week time frame to read that book, I don't have to uh, go and, and research one year's worth of information because uh, now Malcolm just did it for me. He just did it for me. He just did it uh -huh. really, really good for me to the point where I can learn enough that I may say, oh, maybe I should decide to research even more because now what he did is insufficient. So now I'm starting to learn more after where I left off of the last page of reading. Mm -hmm. So if the book was a 350 page book, then when I finish the book, I get to decide, do I want to do more research on this? And if I do, mm -hmm. the, the next book I read, or if I reread that book, I'm going to have a different mm -hmm. mindset of how I'm reading that book. Because now I have more clear insight about all the topics that he touched based on. So when I reread the book, now I can go back to the first page and say, oh, now I understand what he was. Now I understand those references. Now I understand truly what he was trying to deliver with information to me. So now I can say, OK, he just saved me a whole year's worth of time. Now, what am I going to do with that? That is why. I vouch for reading both fiction and nonfiction. I understand that there's people that only stick to one or the other or only write to one or the other. But for me, I personally can't write to just one because there's so much useful information on both fiction and nonfiction. Mm -hmm. And if you don't read, you're giving up all this free knowledge and information. I get it. You got to pay for the book. But for me, it's kind of like free knowledge and time because think about it. If you wrote a 12 month book and somebody mm -hmm. finished it in two or three days, you just saved them 363 days worth of time. Exactly, exactly. Okay, fine. So, like, I think the person should read books according to their interest. Like, uh, what is their interest? So, they should go for that kind of book. Okay, Correct. so I think uh, about the topic book is over. So, let us talk about something finance and the business. Okay, as you told that you have a good interest on finance and business. So tell tell me something about business. Like, what is your plan? Do you want to go further in business or do you want to go in the job? So it glitched out. Can you repeat the question again? Yeah, this time I'm asking that. Uh, what about you? Like, you are interested in business and finance. So you will go for business or you will go for job in further. Gotcha. So again, good questions. So for this particular thing I have going on. It wouldn't be for a job. It'd be for more for a business mindset. So I'm going into this role as a as an author, as an entrepreneur, as a business mindset, as business oriented. So uh, I'm self published. So that means that I have 100% of everything that I'm doing is just based off of my ideas, my execution, what I have going on. I didn't sign a deal or anything like that. So I don't have somebody else's expertise to lean on or anything like that. So everything I have going on as of right now with your interview, 
right now self-published author i don't know if by the end of this conversation i'm i sign a deal but for now uh self-published which means i control everything in regards to what i'm doing so everything from the website to the facebook page to everything 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 i control and that allows me to be my own boss and make my own decisions you know interview with the people that i feel like really either need my help or are going to give me a lot of help or going to add a lot of value or it could be people mm. that you know maybe two three years from now we go back and say yo you remember that first interview we did we didn't know what we were doing <laughs> so that's that's at least my mindset because if i'm the boss if i'm if i have the business if i'm looking at the numbers if i have access and the control to all the information i feel like i would have a better opportunity to make a decision for me as opposed to a business that's looking at me as a business and saying we'll wait until he has you know 50,000 followers to then start publishing the book or we'll wait until he has 10,000 people before he starts doing this and it's like well I can start doing stuff right now I can start moving stuff right now I can start doing stuff right now so uh, that's my mindset a lot of people don't have that ability so I would suggest for those that are trying and thinking about it weigh your skills weigh your skill I'm uh, weigh your skills and by weighing it I mean like actually like looking at the fact that what can you do versus what can you not do you got to weigh it because it's not for everyone a lot of people will try to you know give false information like yeah everybody can do it no everybody cannot do it everybody cannot do it there's seven billion people and everybody has a talent. Not everyone's talent will be to just be a storyteller like I am. You know, maybe somebody else's talent will be to ask good questions. That's a really good talent. Like people think that's a joke, but that's a really good talent. You know, Joe Rogan knows how to ask good questions. There is a reason why he's the number one podcaster in the world is he knows how to be very patient and he knows how to ask good questions. The good authors, there are people that know how to inspire creativity in your mind. Nonfiction authors know how to explain things that you are looking for. You know, do you know, do you want to learn how to cook? Well, there's a cookbook. Do you want to learn how to speak? There's a book for that, et cetera, et cetera. So everybody has a way of doing things. I choose to do it on a business oriented mindset. Some of my friends choose to do it as an employee because they don't want to manage everything. They just want to write. So they'll just write a manuscript and they'll just submit it to somebody. And then that person will take in everything as opposed mm. to me. I'd rather do everything myself. So. Okay. Exactly. So it depends on person. Fine. So, okay. So yes. my call, the next question would be all about the finance. Okay. Because nowadays the people are struggling from financial issues. Okay. Because you will see a lot of people. Okay. From different countries. Okay. Not only in my country, also in your country and most of the country, the people are not financially strong. Okay, so how can a person be financially strong? Like what are the things he need to do? Or how can anyone be financially strong? Because financially strong, like all need money and all. So for, for surviving for a good lifestyle. So my question is all about how can anyone be financially strong in his life? That's a that's a really good question. See, you're going you're up in the difficulty. Uh so this one's really good. <laughs> so for people that have the difficulty of lack of money, this is the biggest problem. Um, well, this is, I would say the second or third biggest problem is people looking at, at stuff like that. So for example, so people that have a limited use of money, mm -hmm. don't look at money as a resource when you're limited with money. So by that, I mean, look at it for something else. So everybody, like I said, everybody has talents. So the 7 Every, billion people, yeah. everybody has talents. Everybody might not have two, but everybody has at least one talent that they're good, right? Mm. So if you're good at something, you know, I heard, I don't know where this is, uh, this phrase comes from, but there's a, there's a phrase that says, if you know how to do something, don't do it for free. Okay, yeah, 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 I got so, you. Yeah, so no, if, people, if people have a, a or are, if people are in a situation where they don't have access to as many of the positive reinforcements 
or the positive things that are in other countries, it does not mean that they are less able to be successful or that they are less able to make money or that they're less able to pursue their dreams. It does not mean that. What that means is that for you, so whoever is listening and you're thinking, I can't do that because I don't have money. I don't have access to money. That's the wrong mindset. The yeah. mindset that you should be having is, is what can I do with what I have now that is going to let me get to the next step? Because a lot of the times people, for example, if you if you live in an underrepresented place and let's say you're working 19 hours a day, only sleeping five hours a day, you see that you have no time for anything. Well, what about mm. the time that you're resting? What about the time that you're working? Can you be working and think of an idea at the same time? If that's not your skill set, because remember, not everybody has skills like that. If that's not your skill set and your skill set is, mm. well, you know, I'm in a terrible financial situation. All I can do is while, let's say, while I'm doing, you know, some manual labor, I'm putting together pieces of a song in my head. So while I'm doing something hard and difficult, I'm putting pieces together in my head or while, you know, while I'm, you know, low income, while I'm living here, living there, bouncing around, let me start putting together things. Let me stop mm. making excuses that I don't have money and I don't have time. And let me find the time. You can't find the money, but you can find the time. You can't find money, but you can find effort. So if you continuously put effort in yourself, if you say, mm. well, at this job or at the situation that I'm in, I, I can't mm. do it. Okay, so what can you do? Don't look at situations like it's the end of the world because we're not at the end of the world right now. We thought we were at the end of the world, but we're not at the end of the world. So for the people yeah. that, you know, they spent all their money thinking, oh, we're at the end of the world. We don't have to worry about 2021 or 2022. Ugh, sucks for you because you weren't prepared as opposed to that person. You know, it could be somebody that's homeless. You know, a lot of stories, from people that they're bouncing around from place to place and their mindset wasn't, well, I don't have a thousand dollars to buy a studio, so I'm, I'm not going to do that. No, their mindset was I'm going to write every song or I'm going to write every story, whether they have pen and paper to afford or whether they say I'm going to use my brain because that's what I'm talented at. Or uh, I know I know in America and in other places of the world, people that perform on the street corner is the same mindset. You know, I don't know if in India there's a lot of people like that that perform on the corners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the pe people do that. Yeah, but very rarely. So in America and other places, depending where, it's very popular. Because uh -huh. people that they don't have uh, access to other things, they'll know, well, if there's 10,000 people in New York City subway, if I, let's say, play a little guitar, you know, I might not get, I might not get any money. I might not get any money, but let me just keep playing every day. And at some point, you know, mathematically speaking, at some point, somebody's going to say either, hey, he's good or uh, I feel sorry for him. Let me give him something. Boom. Like one of the greatest one of the greatest videos I saw from America's Got Talent. I don't know if you've ever heard of America's Got Talent. But yeah, yeah, yeah. one of the greatest videos and one of my favorite performances was from somebody that came from the streets and explained their uh, uh, uprising. It was called, uh, his name was Haspop, and his story was he was homeless, and then he would perform on the streets, and a lot of people would be like really like hyping him and stuff like that, but he still didn't have that source of money, and he got the opportunity to be on the show. And that's what I mean by you looking at the talents you have access to you putting them to use every single day maybe today you're not going to be the guy who's going to be performing in front of a million people but if you put in you know 30 seconds every day of just thinking about it up to if you have five hours free time you know if you're a student if you have no if you have nothing to do and it's like look at all the things that you can do and just start doing them a little bit at a time. And sooner or later, you'll start looking at, oh, wow, I'm not that good of a dancer, but I'm better than this guy. And then if I do this and this, then I can be better than that guy. And then that's how you keep learning and you keep growing. And that's the whole point. It's just you just progress. The problem is people give up 
and they don't want to do it they don't want to keep trying and for them i say uh, sucks because somebody else is going to have less resources and less opportunities than you do and they're going to make mm -hmm. use of everything you might mm. have 50 opportunities and 50 skills and you might use zero somebody might have only one shot and one opportunity and they take it and they make it mm -hmm. okay fine fine so you so like you explained very well okay i think you have a very vast knowledge on every field okay because you explained the things very well in a in and in a very deep manner so i think uh, it's now like we should wrap up the conversation now because we have like i do podcast like till 30 minutes i don't go for a long podcast because if i do long podcast the people will not watch it okay they will skip at the between only hey this is your podcast watch. i'm just answering your really good questions you ask really good questions man i'm telling you you ask really good questions if you didn't ask good <laughs> questions i wouldn't give you good answers just keep that in mind yeah exactly okay so i think we should end the podcast okay and thank you thank you thank you very much mr nico thank you for, for having me thank you for time. having me so much yeah yeah for, for for giving a precious time for me and for my audience and for delivering a very like wonderful content okay thank you so much we will try to connect again uh, again and again okay i will try to bring you again okay so from have a good day for now take care be blessed and good luck and be yeah. safe